glance, you might not understand what he is talking about, but there are other scripture portions that we look into what Paul is talking about here. So he has not ceased to pray. He's thankful to God for all the qualities that they possess. And now he presents a prayer request. He asks God that the church of Colossae may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. So what does Paul mean by this? A similar prayer request we can see in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 to 17. So in there Paul says, For this reason I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which exist among you and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give. There also he doesn't cease to give thanks in Ephesians 1, 15 to 17, while making mention of you in my prayers. And in verse 17, Paul says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. A similar prayer request Paul is making in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17, that he Praise to God, Hori. Ask God to give a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him. So what is this knowledge and wisdom? A philosopher, one, or what is the difference between knowledge and wisdom? I think I've mentioned in some other place. Uh, a philosopher once mentioned, knowing that tomato is a fruit is knowledge, and not to put in fruit salad is wisdom, right? So you know many things. As people, we all know many things. And that's why the philosopher said, knowing tomato is a fruit is knowledge, but not to put in fruit salad is wisdom. You don't put tomato in a fruit salad because it's a fruit. Because in fruit salad, there are only certain fruits that go with it, right? You cannot put tomato just because it's a fruit. So that is the example that uh, this philosopher mentioned about the difference between knowledge and wisdom. So as believers in Jesus Christ, we all need to have this knowledge and wisdom. We know many things. But wisdom is that we don't apply all that we know wherever we want. Or just because we know many things, just because we want to say many things, we don't say everything everywhere, right? We need to apply God-given wisdom which God has poured out into our hearts. So remember, in this context, Paul is talking about knowledge and wisdom. They all have this knowledge. They have been learning the word of God. But God just doesn't, I mean, Paul doesn't just want them to be filled in the knowledge but he wants them to fill be filled with wisdom and understanding how to apply that knowledge that we have received by learning the word of god by praying by constantly bearing fruit by constantly being in communication with god we all possess knowledge right but with the knowledge we have we need to also understand how to apply that knowledge wherever needed how to apply that wisdom and that is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. You can possess knowledge by learning, by reading, by learning, by reading books, by communicating with people. But wisdom doesn't, we don't gain wisdom like that. We gain wisdom only by the constant communication with God, by communicating with God, by being online with God, by being in prayer. You understand what the will of God is. You understand how to apply the knowledge that we have received from God. So the God, that Holy Spirit is needed inside us, that empowerment of the Spirit, that discernment of the Spirit is needed for every believer in Jesus Christ on how to apply the knowledge that we possess. So here Paul says, be filled with the knowledge of His will. So how or what knowledge of will is Paul talking about? First Timothy chapter 2. So what is God's uh, knowledge or what is the knowledge of his will that Paul is talking about in first Timothy 2 4 one thing that Paul mentions is God's will is to desire or God's will is that all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth he wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth the knowledge of the very truth that is mentioned in the scriptures or come to the knowledge of the word of God God's will is that all men every man in this world to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So the church of Colossae, he prays to God that they will share this gospel that they have received from Epaphras and they will share this knowledge to everywhere, to wherever ac the access, wherever places they have access. And so that eventually through that sharing of the gospel, they will come to the knowledge of the truth. What is another no will that God wants every believer to have or for this is the will of God in 1 Thessalonians 4.3. Uh, Paul says, for this is the will of God, your sanctification. To possess holiness, to exhibit holiness. That's 
another will of God or that's God it's God's will to exhibit holiness to exhibit sanctification to be sanctified to possess holiness in our walk with the Lord in our everyday walk of the Lord first we mentioned God desires all men to be saved secondly we mentioned the will of God is our sanctification or our holiness thirdly we see the knowledge of his will what is the knowledge of his will Ephesians 5 17 to 19 understand what the will of the Lord is Paul says verse 18 of Ephesians 5 do not get drunk with wine for this is dissipation but be filled in the spirit or be filled with the spirit another will of God we see be filled with the spirit and what does that do we speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord so another will of God we see be filled with the spirit and this filling of the spirit needs to happen constantly as we bear fruit we be we should be constantly fill be filled with the spirit and that filling should lead us to speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord in the old in the New Testament context when Paul talks to them they only had the Old Testament as the Bible so when Paul talks to the church at Ephesus Paul is saying speak to one another in Psalms all the psalmodies you have you have received all the Psalms that you have received speak to one another making melody to God for the edification of the church hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord so what does that represent that represents unity that represents worship that represents praise that represents Thanksgiving all these will be uh, will happen when you be filled in the spirit and when you speak to one another in Sam so that is the importance of worship also that we see when we sing songs when we sing hymns when we praise God it represents that we are being, we are being filled with the spirit and we are making melody to the heart of the Lord so that we worship in unity and that eventually glorifies God another will of God first Thessalonians 5 18 we see rejoice always pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus another will of God what is the knowledge of his will his will is to rejoice always every time rejoice no matter what your circumstances in spite of circumstances, despite your circumstances, be, re be rejoicing every time. Be happy always. Be joyful always. Pray without ceasing. As we see Paul, if in all of his epistles, he has not ceased to pray for whichever church he's writing these epistles to. In this epistle also, he says, I have not ceased to pray for you or we have not ceased to pray for you. That should be a quality of us also. We should have also, we should possess that quality also to pray without ceasing rejoice always and in everything whatever benefits that we have received from the Lord or even if we have not received anything in everything give thanks for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus having a heart of gratitude having a heart of thankfulness being thankful to God for whatever he's done in our life being thankful to God for all the benefits he has given or for all the blessings he has showered upon us that's why you Sam 103 Sam uh, Sam says forget not all his benefits bless the Lord O my soul bless his holy name bless the Lord O my soul forget not all his benefits so we should always be thankful for all the benefits that we receive from the Lord and we should rejoice always whether you receive benefits or not be always joyful rejoice always in any circumstance you are whatever circumstance you have or you are rejoice always and pray without ceasing that praying without ceasing indicates the constant relationship we have with our Lord Jesus Christ that constant that consistent relationship or the consistent relation we have with God represents our bears the fruit of praying without seeing if, if you cease to pray that means there is a there is a stop or there is a, a line that has cut your relationship with God but if you pray without ceasing that indicates that your relationship continues you keep you keeping you, you're going forward with that relationship with God and that's why Paul says pray without ceasing that communication needs to happen every day in your life that com communication that needs to consistently happen when you pray without ceasing and in everything 
give thanks for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. So we saw uh, around four things. What is the knowledge of his will? His will is for all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth of God. Secondly, we saw the will of God. The knowledge of his will is our sanctification, our holiness, that we should walk holy in the presence of God. When we walk in this world, we should carry the holiness of God in us so that we can also be holy in our walk. Thirdly, we saw to be filled with the Spirit. The knowledge of His will is to be filled with the Spirit so that we could speak to one another in psalms and hymns and in spiritual songs, making melody with our heart to the Lord. And fourthly, we saw to rejoice always. His will is to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks to the Lord. And this is the knowledge of His will that every believer in Christ Jesus should exhibit, should possess. So, so, so as I said before, the false teachers, they crept into this church of Colossae and they were trying to tell the church that they need to gain a special knowledge. So this faith in Christ alone is not enough, but rather they need to gain a special knowledge. Gnosis in the Greek word, I don't know you see. They need to gain or possess a special knowledge in addition to the faith which they have put in Jesus Christ. Without this special knowledge, they cannot gain heaven or they cannot enter heaven. So that is what the false teachers that crept into this church of Colossae were trying to tell the church in Colossae. And they got confused. The church at Colossae got confused. And that is why Paul wants to confirm the real gospel or the true gospel here that he's keep on praying for the church to gain the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. You don't need special knowledge, but your faith in Christ alone should give you the knowledge that you require from the Word of God. When you consistently, when you constantly learn the Word of God in truth, the constant communication with God will fill you with the knowledge of His will. And who does that? The Holy Spirit fills you with the knowledge of His will. And remember, when we see you may, when we, re, when we read that word, be filled. Be filled means be controlled by. Filling in the word, it's not just uh, literal filling, but rather that metaphor is used so that he tries to mean to be controlled by. Be filled means be controlled by. Be filled by the Spirit means be controlled by the Spirit. The Spirit then leads you. It's not your selfish interest. It's not the, your desires, but rather the desires of the Spirit is carried out when you walk in the manner of the Lord, when you walk with the Spirit. So remember that when Paul says, you may be filled with the knowledge of His will, this knowledge that we have received from God leads us. Or the knowledge of His will that we have received from God controls us. Then our only desire is to carry out the will of God. Not the will of man, not our desire, not our pleasures, not our will, but rather when we are filled with the knowledge of His will, when we are controlled by the knowledge of His will, our only desire will be to carry out the will that we have received, to carry out the knowledge that we received and walk in a way that pleases God. So just remember that. And that's what uh, one scholar said. Right knowledge leads to right behavior. Unless you receive the right knowledge, you cannot exhibit a right behavior. So that's why the scholar says, right knowledge always leads to right behavior or it leads to transformation in our character. So remember, it's not just the church of Colossae, the global church. Our church needs to be filled with the knowledge of His will every day of our life, not just when we got saved, not, when, not just when we got baptized uh, in water and in spirit, but rather every day of our life we need to be filled or we need to be controlled by the knowledge of His will. And without the knowledge of His will, remember, we cannot lead a successful Christian life. This similar phrase that we read, verse 9, filled with this knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. We see in Old Testament too. Uh, just want to quickly mention where we see that. Isaiah, we don't need to read. I'll just read it. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 2 and 3. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and strength. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. There the, word, there the verse is talking about Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So uh, Isaiah is saying, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. So he gives a definition or he gives a, 
uh, 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 an attribute of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of counsel and strength. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. What, what, how, what a beautiful verse. What a beautiful uh, verse that describes the attribute or quality of the Holy Spirit. We all have received this Holy Spirit. It is a spirit of, or he is a spirit of wisdom and understanding. He is a spirit of counsel and strength. He guides us. He gives us counsel. He strengthens us. He gives us wisdom. He gives us understanding. He gives us knowledge. And all these attributes that the Holy Spirit leads us to the fear of the Lord. And then Isaiah says, he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He's talking about Jesus. And he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make a decision, but what is ears heard. The Spirit gives us discernment. Holy Spirit gives us discernment. Another Old Testament verse which we see, where we see knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is Exodus chapter 31, verses 2. See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, or the tribe of Judah. I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and all kinds of craftsmanship. So here uh, Moses is talking about building of the tabernacle. And he's saying he's called name uh, Bezalel, the son of Uri, and filled him with spirit of God in wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and all kinds of craftsmanship. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of God, and he gives us wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Even to build a tabernacle, Bezalel needed the spirit of God. So remember what the importance of Holy Spirit in our day-to-day -day life. To build a tabernacle, Moses is saying, God called Bezalel, and God filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and craftsmanship. Another verse, 1 Kings 7, verses 14. There, uh, he's talking about the building of Solomon's temple. He was a widow's son from the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in bronze. And he was filled with wisdom, understanding, and skill for doing any work in bronze. So he came to King Solomon and performed all his work. To, to build Solomon's temple, uh, Hiram from Tyre needed wisdom, understanding, and skill. So even in their day-to-day -day life, the Old Testament saints had an understanding that they, need, that they needed the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, they cannot carry out their daily task even, not just being spiritual, but rather even to carry out their daily task. They needed the Spirit of God. And that's why in Old Testament we see even the Old Testament people for their craftsmanship, for the, to display their craftsmanship, they needed the Holy Spirit of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Uh, we, some of us may know the Greek word of wisdom is Sophia. Uh, there is a Sophia school in Kotem. So wisdom in Greek is called Sophia. And wisdom is a perception with discernment. Remember that uh, it is... Uh, it is not just knowledge, as I said before, but rather, where do you apply that knowledge? How do you apply that knowledge? And that is wisdom. Wisdom is not knowledge. What differs wisdom or what makes wisdom different from knowledge is that wisdom, is where, wisdom means where you apply the knowledge that you have and how do you apply the knowledge that you have. And in a biblical context, wisdom is always for our practical living. God gives us wisdom. The Spirit of God gives us wisdom so that you can live a life worthy of the Lord. You can live a life, walk a life worthy of our calling and election. And remember, whatever knowledge that we receive from the Word of God, this knowledge is not to uh, increase our intellect or be filled in our intellect, but rather whatever we receive, whatever we learn, whatever we listen to should lead us into uh, life walking in holiness, life walking worthy of how God has called us. So it should Lead us in a practical Christian life worthy of our calling and election for the benefit of the glory of God. And then uh, when he says knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, another verse that came to my mind was Proverbs 9 verses 10. I hope you all know that. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So there he, he differentiates, Solomon differentiates between wisdom and understanding. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord. And what is understanding? The knowledge of the Holy One. The knowledge of God is understanding. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Another verse to note down. Proverbs 9.10. What is wisdom and what is understanding? Solomon says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
and the knowledge of God or knowledge of the Holy One. He uh, mentions God as Holy One. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. When we receive that knowledge of the Holy One, that knowledge should lead us to walk in holiness. That knowledge, that knowledge should lead us to conduct our life in a holy manner of the Lord. Colossians 1.10 then says, So that you walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please Him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So what should all this lead to? And, uh, whatever I said before, whatever knowledge that you receive, the wisdom, the understanding that you receive should lead you into four different aspects which Paul mentions in 10. So it should lead you uh, in four, di uh, four dif different uh, aspects. You walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Please God in all respects. Bearing fruit in every good work, increase in the knowledge of God. So the purpose of this knowledge, the purpose of God-given wisdom, the purpose of the spiritual understanding is to walk like Jesus. Is to please God in everything that we do. Is to bear fruit in every good works that we do. And is to increase in the knowledge of the Lord. Ephesians 4, 1 we see, Therefore I prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. So Paul mentions in Ephesians 4, 1, 2, to, he implores the church at Ephesus to walk in a manner worthy of the calling. There another word is used, worthy of the calling. Here it, Paul just says, worthy of the Lord. So worthy of the calling that we have received. Each of us have received a calling from the Lord and that's why we all are here in this sanctuary. Without being called, we won't be here. We were called by the Lord. And why did God call us? He called us so that we would walk in a manner worthy of the Lord or in a manner worthy of our calling and election, which Peter mentions in the epistle. Philippians chapter 1, 27, Paul says, Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. So we saw worthy of the Lord, worthy of the calling of the Lord. Thirdly, we see worthy of the gospel of Christ. We, uh, we mentioned about or we heard about the gospel last class. We should walk a life or we should walk a walk worthy of the gospel of Christ, Paul says. So that whether I come and see you or remain absent, I will hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit. So why should we walk worthy of the gospel of Christ? So that we will stand firm in one spirit. The spirit is a spirit of unity. So, in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. So, there is a purpose to walk worthy of the Lord. Or there is a purpose of walking with the Lord for the sake of the gospel. And what is that purpose? Paul says, to stand firm in one spirit. To stand firm in the unity of the spirit. To stand firm with one, one mind. Even though we all are different parts of the body of Christ. We, are all, we all form the body of Christ. We should all have one mind. Right? Even though we are all different parts of the body, we can, we can be an ear or uh, any other sense or any other organ of the body, but we should only have one mind. We should only think alike. We should not think differently. But all of us should think with one, one mind. And Paul says, we should strive together for the faith of the gospel. The faith that is being produced by this gospel, we should strive together in unity for that faith. First Thessalonians 2.12 Another, way, another verse where Paul talks about walking. So that you would walk in a manner worthy of the God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Why should you walk worth, worthy of your calling? So that you uh, would glorify God. Another function or another attribute of work, walking in a manner worthy of the God. It's God who calls us into his kingdom. God has called each one of us into his kingdom. When we receive that calling, our responsibility is to Glorify God. So I mentioned, I think, three or four things. We should walk in a manner worthy of the Lord so that, in Ephesians 4, 1 says, worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Walk in a manner. We should walk in a manner because God called us. We should walk in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ because we sh uh, the purpose is to stand firm in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Why should we walk in a manner worthy of the gospel? So that we will stand in unity, in one spirit, in one mind, together for the faith of the gospel. To produce this faith. When the outside world sees us, we should only have one spirit. We should only have one mind. 
and we should strive together work hard for the faith of the gospel another uh, verse where paul mentions about walking a man or worthy of god is for his glorification he has called each one of us to his kingdom for his own glory and then paul says please god in all respects so uh, romans 8:8 8, we know that verse uh, in your flesh you cannot please god that's what uh, romans 8:8 8, 8, we say paul says and those who are in the flesh cannot please god another verse hebrews 11:6 paul say uh, the writer of hebrews says and without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to god must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who seek him so if you are in your flesh you cannot please god if you don't have faith you cannot please god so what is the opposite of that you should be in your spirit you cannot walk in the flesh but rather you have to walk in the spirit to please god and without faith it is impossible to please god so you should have faith and this faith is a gift of god a gift of god god rewards you with this faith and with this faith you can please god so without faith you cannot please god and without be our with our uh, who are in the flesh or those who are in the flesh cannot please god so you should be walking according to the spirit you cannot walk according to the desires of your flesh but rather you should walk according to the spirit if you walk in the spirit you can please god and if you have faith it is possible to please god or you can please god with faith so that you come to god with a faith or with the belief that who he is what is the faith that you should have you should have faith on who god is you should have a right understanding about god and god rewards those who have faith or those who seek him if you seek god with the right understanding of god if you seek god with the right knowledge of god if you seek god with the right wisdom of god if you seek god with the right understanding of god god will reward you and that's what the writer of hebrews says and then paul says bearing fruit in every good work so we saw walk in a manner worthy of the lord we saw pleasing god in all respects and thirdly bearing fruit in every good work so you should walk in a manner worthy of the lord so that it glorifies god and that fruit that is produced by you should be in all your good works so fruit remember fruit is a by product of our works when we walk in a manner worthy of the lord we all produce fruit the fruit of the spirit and we will see different fruit that the new testament authors mention uh, one fruit that uh, paul mentions in first corinthians 16 15 now I urge you brethren uh, you know that the household of stephanus and they were the first fruits of achaia so you sharing you share the gospel of jesus christ when you share the gospel that is the fruit produced by the faith you have inside you the faith inside you that you have received from jesus christ leads you to the first fruit and that first fruit is to share the gospel with the outside world hebrews 13:15 through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise which is the fruit of lips the fruit of lips second fruit paul mentioned or the writer of hebrews mentions through god let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise a sacrifice of praise on our lips that is another fruit that we need to produce romans 15 verses 26 contribution please to make a contribution for the poor among the saints in jerusalem giving for the lord not just giving praise not just giving thanks but rather giving money giving offering giving tithes giving money spending your money for the lord that is a fruit that every believer needs to have hebrews chapter 12 11 at discipline all discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful but sorrowful but those who have been trained by it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness yielding the fruit of righteousness is a fruit that all believers need to produce we should produce the fruit of righteousness and finally galatians chapter 5 verses 22 a verse that we all know the fruit of the spirit is life love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control and those who belong to christ jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desire so how do we produce this fruit when we know god more knowing god i don't i don't mean to uh, know about god but rather experientially knowing god that is the experience that we all need to have we can know about god when we read bible when we read different books but knowing god means you need to have that personal relationship with god that personal experience with god if you don't have that personal experience with god you cannot know god 
That's the difference between knowing God and knowing about God. I've told this many times in this pulpit itself. Knowing God means you should experientially knowing God. In your spirit, you recognize what the Holy Spirit wants from you and you walk uh, the walk, uh, walk in a life or walk a life worthy of your calling and election. Walk a life worthy of the manner God has called you by walking in holiness. So you experientially know God. You experience God in every day of our life, in every aspect of your life, every zone of your life, you experientially know God. And that is what knowing God means in a New Testament context. And when we get to know God more, automatically we will walk with the Lord. Enoch walked with the Lord, right? He walked with the, God, with the Lord. He walked with God. How can we walk with God? Only when you know God. Unless you know God, you cannot walk with God. So remember, whatever we learned today, we learned about unity of the Spirit. The Spirit was producing the fruit of love among the church of Colossae. And we learned about the difference between knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Knowledge is about knowing things. Wisdom is how you apply that knowledge or where do you apply that knowledge. And understanding is the knowledge of the Holy One. Knowledge of God is understanding. And we all learned about the will of God. His will of, the will of God is that all men need to be saved. And another will of God, we saw the holiness of His saints. Third will of God, to be filled with the Spirit. Fourth will of God, to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks to the Lord. We saw in Old Testament where we talk about knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And then the fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And how can we please God? Only with faith we can please God. And only if you walk according to the Spirit that you can please God. And Paul mentions to walk worthy of the calling that we have received. We need to stand firm in one spirit, with one mind, and strive together for the faith of the gospel, which eventually leads to glorifying God. And we saw the various fruits that we uh, see in the scripture. Sharing the gospel is one fruit. Continually offering a sacrifice of praise is another fruit. And uh, thirdly, we saw giving money for the poor and giving money for the church, giving money to God, spending our resources for the for the sake of God is a fruit and yielding a fruit of righteousness. And finally, we saw the fruit of the Spirit, the nine characteristics that we need to possess as a believer of Jesus Christ. And lastly, we saw we need to walk a wo and walk in a manner worthy of the Lord only when we know God. Unless you know God, you cannot walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. So let us experientially know who God is and what God has done in the past, in the present, and what He is going to do in the future. And let that knowledge leads or then let that knowledge lead us to walk in a worthy of a calling and election that we received let's pray heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful morning you've given us lord god thank you for all the blessings you showered upon us as we worship you in spirit and in truth speak to each one of us lord god let you be glorified you alone be magnified you alone be exalted lord god and uh, as the worship service progresses lord holy spirit we need your presence, Lord. We need to experience your presence this morning time. We come to the foot of the cross. We repent of our sins, Lord. Forgive our sins, Lord. Make us holy this morning. In Jesus Christ's name we pray.